This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE2301 statics. The subject is moment of inertia. We're going to do some examples here in a minute in the second part of this video, but first I just want to talk about the basic concepts of moment of inertia. Uh, it's the second moment of the area, and that's kind of the math term for it. And then the um, we use the letter I to designate the moment of inertia. And what the moment of inertia does is it measures the spread or the distribution of an area about an axis. The further away the area is from the axis, the bigger the moment of inertia. So the basic calculus derivation of it is, if I have an area, this blob, in an xy axis with an origin here, and I say a little element of that area, infinitesimally small, is this dA, this little square. Okay, it's located a distance x from the y axis and a distance y from the x axis. Okay, we're going to define the moment of inertia as the integral of the moment of inertia about the x-axis is the integral of y squared, that y squ distance squared, times dA, and integrate that over the area. Similarly, the moment of inertia about the y-axis is the integral of this x squared, d dA, x squared distance, dA. There's another one, a third one, called the polar moment of inertia, which is the integral of r squared. r is the distance from the o axis, from the o coordinate center, center origin to the little area. So it's really r is um, the square root of the sum of the squares of x squared and y squared, or r squared is really equal to x squared plus y squared. So we can simplify that down, say the polar moment of inertia, j o, is equal to i x plus i y. Okay, here we come with the a very important parallel axis theorem that says if I have, I can find the center, the centroid of this area, this blob, and I've designated that with this cross or this plus and a C, that just means the centroid of that area, which we figured using um, integration or composite areas or however we figured it. Okay, then I draw x prime axis parallel to the x axis passing through that centroid and a y prime axis similarly parallel to y passing through there. Okay, I want to figure, I can figure the uh, i x prime and put a bar over it to designate that it's the moment of inertia about its own centroidal x prime axis. So that's just going to be just like I figured it up here, the integral of, for ix, the integral of this y prime distance from each little elemental area times y, y prime squared. Same thing for the centroidal moment of inertia about its y prime axis is just this little elemental area dA times x prime squared. So I can calculate that usually. Parallel axis theorem says that the moment of inertia about an x-axis at any location is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia about the x-prime axis plus the area times this dy distance, which is the distance from the x-prime axis to the x-axis, the centroidal x-prime axis to the x-axis, take that number, that dimension, or distance, dy, and I square it, multiply it by the area of the whole shape, add to that the moment of inertia about its own centroidal x prime axis, and that gives me ix. So this number is equal to this number, and it's just a different way of calculating it. It's very useful. We're going to take this equation, we're going to rearrange it, sometimes we'll know what ix prime is, 
and we'll know a dy squared and we can figure ix. Sometimes we'll know what this is, ix, and we'll know, know what the area dy squared is. And we can figure backwards and we'll figure into the uh, ix prime number by subtracting a dy squared from ix. You'll see that as we have some example problems. Same thing with the IY, it's IY prime central, centroidal moment of inertia plus ADX squared, where DX is the distance from the centroid Y prime axis to the Y axis. Remember that JO is uh, IX plus IY. And then we have this final concept of the radius of gyration. And it's kind of an abstract deal, but it's really visualize this area, whatever it is, distributed in a thin ring about the x-axis. This is the radius of that ring, that circle. And it's mathematically just the square root of ix divided by the area. ky is the square root of iy divided by the area. And ko is the square root of jo, the polar moment of inertia, divided by a. Next video we'll do some examples.